Most foods can spike insulin, even protein. We don't want you to go up and down wondering how to stabilize your insulin levels. That's why we'll give you a list of foods that really don't cause an insulin spike, and if they do, it's really small. First of all, let's talk about fiber. What you need to know is that fiber doesn't spike insulin. The only problem is if you combine it with other things, such as sugar or starchy foods, because that way, you'll surely get that spike. Also, you need to know that fiber is divided into two groups, soluble and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber, in particular, can help control blood sugar spikes. Here's an interesting fact. The National Institute of Medicine found that diets with 14 grams of fiber for every 1,000 calories were connected with significant reductions in the risk of both coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Because of that, we decided to start today's list with some fibrous goodies. So the number one food that doesn't spike insulin is shirataki noodles. Shirataki noodles are made from a substance called glucomannan, which is a soluble fiber that absorbs a lot of water. Noodles made from glucomannan flour are actually about 3% fiber and 97% water. The soluble fiber in shirataki noodles can slow down the rate at which the body absorbs carbohydrates. This can help people with diabetes avoid blood sugar spikes. However, people with diabetes should talk to their doctor before consuming glucomannan as it could affect their medication. Okay, moving on. We also recommend including seaweed in your menu. This is something that won't trigger an insulin spike. Once again, it's a soluble fiber. Now, there are multiple different categories of seaweed, but we recommend trying out nori. If you're looking for something like a simple snack, you could take nori, roll up shiitake noodles in it, and put a little bit of, let's say, tamari sauce that has no carbs. And here you go. You have a little Asian burrito that won't spike your insulin, and it tastes super good. The next in line is avocado. It's a good source of healthy fat and has around 20 different vitamins and minerals. And again, avocado is high in fiber, with half a fruit containing 6 to 7 grams. One study published in Nutrition Journal showed that despite the extra calories and carbs in avocado, there was no increase in blood sugar levels. The study participants also had a lower immediate rise in insulin levels in comparison with the same lunch eaten without the avocado. The results provide promising clues and a basis for future research to determine the avocado effect on satiety, glucose, and insulin response. Also, another superfood that we can't skip in this list is nuts, especially almonds. Almonds can help regulate and reduce the rise in blood sugar after meals and prevent diabetes. One study showed that people who consumed 2 ounces of almonds per day had lower levels of fasting glucose and insulin. Also, don't forget to include other nuts like pistachios, walnuts, and macadamias in your menu instead of crackers and other snacks the next time you're hungry. And obviously, avoid nuts that are coated in salt or sugar. Instead, try dry roasted or raw nuts, which are flavorful but still healthy and won't spike your insulin levels. Another one on the fiber list is chia seeds. Chia seeds are rich in antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, fiber, and magnesium. They may have the ability to convert glucose into a slow-release carbohydrate. It means this could have a positive effect on people with type 2 diabetes. You can use chia seeds as a sprinkle on yogurt or cereal. Also, some people use chia seeds as a substitute for eggs and baking. Just mix one tablespoon of chia with three tablespoons of water. Let the mixture sit for a few minutes. The seeds will absorb the water and form a gel that you can use instead of an egg. While talking about eggs, in case you're looking for a higher protein, low insulin spiking food, eggs would be the best option. What's interesting is that they still spike insulin, but their glucagon response is nice. What do we mean? Well, when protein spikes insulin, it also stimulates glucagon, an antagonist to insulin. So even though carbs and protein spike insulin, which lowers blood sugar, protein also stimulates glucagon, which elevates blood sugar, resulting in a stable environment. This is one reason why eating protein at most meals and snacks is so beneficial. It helps balance the relationship between blood sugar and insulin as well as keeping you full. Also, hard-boiled eggs work perfectly as a satisfying snack or quick breakfast option. Don't run away! We have more videos for you! Check out how olive oil can actually improve your health and find out how one special fruit can bring a bunch of health benefits just with a tiny drop into one glass of water. Want more? Subscribe to Health Insider and never miss our videos!